Well, welcome back, friends, to OG's Happy Little Danger Show. <laughs> So I've had a lot of questions from the last video on the simple rifle about how to recreate the paint job on that rifle. Sort of my own custom camouflage look. Some people called it a snake. You can call it whatever you want, a dragon, a snake, whatever you like. There are no mistakes here, only happy little accidents. Now, the only rifle I have to paint is the Fight Light SCR. It happens to be the only rifle that I own that is part original color. I've been meaning to paint this rifle for a long time, so I thank you for asking me to paint it here on our show. Let's get to it. Now the first thing I want to do is take off all of the extra things like slings, and bands. We don't need those things on there when we're painting our rifle. So I want to remove all of those things and get them off of the rifle and tape up all of the areas that need to be taped up to prevent paint getting in areas where we don't want it. We're also going to remove this proctor sling from the front of the rifle. Very easy to do with this type of sling. Since it's really only just looped around. Oops, don't want the rifle to fall. So, we pull up through this sling in the little loop, and just as simple as that, the sling is now free from our rifle, and we can take it off. How about that? We also want to remove things like lights and reel covers. And look how easy that was. These Knight's Armament rail covers simply press in, and slide them off. There we go. Easy as pie. Along with taping up areas that we don't want paint in, we want to close up things like the dust cover so we don't get paint inside on the bolt. That would definitely slow things down and not be good. So we're just gonna apply a little bit of tape back here to keep the lens from getting paint on it. It's alright if we don't get tape everywhere since this scope already has a little paint on it. If we miss a little spot here and there, it's okay. There we go, all taped up. Now I'd also like to keep tape out of my magazine well so we don't have any interference when putting magazines in and out of the rifle. You can do this one of two ways. Put tape across it or take an old magazine that you don't like and insert it into the magazine well and let the paint get on that magazine. I like all my magazines, so I'm gonna add tape to my rifle. I also don't necessarily want tape on the trigger of my rifle, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap that trigger in a little bit of tape. Just a little smidge of tape. Keep that old nasty paint off of it. There we go. Happy little tape. Now I don't necessarily wanna get paint over the power numbers on my Primary Arms ACSS LPVO scope. So what I'm gonna do is just put a little tape right over those numbers, just so that when we're all done, I can read them. Doesn't have to be perfect. Again, this is your rifle. Do what you like. I also would like to keep the scope covers on my rifle clean and without paint since they have markings on them. Let's just go ahead and add a little smidge of tape 
over those school colors, shall we? Doesn't have to be pretty. Just a little bit of tape. Wrap it around here, all the way around. I'm gonna tape over the lens of the scope so I don't get any paint inside of there. And that would be catastrophic. The front end of the scope already has a lens cover on it, so we'll just keep that closed and paint it like it is. Let's just add a little bit of masking tape around this dial and its cover. Wrap it around, overlap it a little bit, and then we'll close it up on this side so we don't get any paint on that cover. Look at that. We covered that up like a Benghazi scandal. I think we've taped up the scope and the trigger real nice along with the magazine well. Now it's time to prep the rifle. Some time ago I added Loctite to these little screws because I knew this was the scope that was going to stay on this rifle. So I'm not going to dick with those. Instead I'm just going to tape off that rear side a little bit so that it remains black and easier to see. Let's just put a little bit of tape in here. If I ever need to, I can remove that scope and use these backup iron sights. But for now, we just want to tape over them so they don't get any paint on them. There we go. Happy little tape. All covered up like piggies in a blanket. To remove excess fingerprints and oils and any dust that might be on the rifle, I want to blast it with this brake cleaner, a parts cleaner. It'll wash all of that evil right off the rifle, onto the ground, and out of our way. Just blast it on there. Blast it on. It dries very, very quickly. It won't take the old paint off. Just any sweat. Nastiness, any evil that might be on our rifle. Let's just clean the devil out of it. Clean that devil. Away with you, devil. There we go. Oops, looks like I forgot one of the knight's rail covers. Let's get that off of there. Well, it's almost time for us to paint our rifle, but first, we're gonna need some stencils. Come along with me and let's make some happy little stencils. Now for this part of the project, we're just gonna take any kind of material you like. You can use masking tape if you like to mask off your different shapes, but I can also use a piece of art paper, or thin cardboard. I can use this cheap, flimsy little folder I found down at Walmart for about 97 cents. And of course, you're gonna need some scissors. I had to steal these from Mrs. OG's utensils drawer because Mrs. OG and the OG daughters steal all my scissors and evidently sell them to the gypsies because there are no scissors in my house. I want to take this folder and I want to just give it a random cut. Just a random wavy cut. Maybe it's some hills or some boobies you're in envisioning. Some type of wavy shape. Just waves, waves on the ocean. There's a nice shape. Now we also have the negative of that shape. We can use both of these. So don't throw it away. Here are my two favorite paints. First, Ervo brand. Ervo is the actual military brand paint, but this comes in a civilian style can. I like this because it's flat and true to military colors. I also will use, from time to time, your standard camo paint available at your Walmart, as long as you're over 18 years old and they will let you inside the paint cage. Now for this project, I'm gonna reverse the colors of what I normally do on my rifles. I normally start off with a base layer of a sand color, a light, almost like a flat dark earth, but a little bit lighter. I paint the entire rifle with sand color first and let that dry. Today I'm going to apply a good coat of OD Green first and then we'll put on some sand colored stripes afterwards. Come on, let's do it. 
just want to give it a light coat just a little dusting little dusting here and there I've decided I don't want to paint up my tripod so I'm gonna place this folder underneath the rifle while we paint the base color working smarter not harder let's go ahead with our OD green let's paint out that evil evil black get rid of that black rifle color we got to get rid of the black rifles because they're evil and they automatically go and shoot a schoolyard full of children all by themselves just a light dusting just come in here just a scooch just scooch 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 Just a very light dusting so that it dries nice. We definitely don't want to paint so thick that it starts dripping down our rifle. That's too wet. Said no one ever. All right, time to turn that rifle around. Hey, will you look at that? There's another side. There's another side to every story. Let's just move that little protective cover over here a little bit. Set that rifle on that little platform again. Let it balance there like a little egg. We're gonna come in and we're going to dust out all of that old paint job. That old nasty, nasty paint job. Didn't go together and didn't look right anyway. Just come in here and dust it in a little bit. Just a really light coat. Listen to that jingle jingle. Must be my can's almost empty. Don't forget the top side of your rifle either. Make sure we get all the little angles on the bottom and on the top. And don't forget the back side. Well, uh, I ran out of paint on that first can, but fortunately I have a second can ready to go. Look at that. Just an olive green dust. Just a dust of green everywhere. Oh, that little can. Choking up on me here, you little rascal. You little rascal. Don't forget the front of that rifle. Let's get all those little angles, get rid of all that ugly old paint that we don't like anymore. Don't forget to Flip it over, do the bottom. So it appears we have now painted our rifle a pretty solid OD green. It's time to get those accessories. Don't forget those. So we've got all of our rail covers laid out here on Mrs. OG's flower planter with some papers down below it to make sure that we don't get her flowers a different kind of green. Let's go ahead and give them a light coat. Just a little dusting. Olive green. Green like an olive. Olive branches stand for peace. This rifle does not. Just make sure you get all sides of those. Come over on the other side. And just give them a little dusting. There we go. Okay. Now. You want to take a color that also goes with your environment. My environment around here is pretty dry and dead, so I have chosen light sand color 
to complement this olive green. And we're gonna put a lot of sand color and another color, a third color on there too. Now the way the OG painted the rifle you see in this picture here is just by laying a template like this on the rifle, holding it down tight and spraying a hard line on there. Just to spray a nice straight line and let the rest of it just drift away and spray out nice and smooth. I'll show you. So I'm just gonna place the template up against the buttstock of the rifle and give it a little dust into this sand color. Just put the template on there and give it a little, little sandblast, little sandblast. Letting it fade away over here, but leaving a nice sharp line right there. That's magical. That is just magical. And then we're just going to do that again. We're going to move this template around a little bit and give it a little sandblast and pull it away. Put the template back in a different angle and give it a little sandblast and pull it away. Put it up here one last time, give it a sandblast and pull it away. It's already coming together. There are no mistakes, only happy little accidents. Now, because our rifle's lines move horizontally and a lot of them move vertically, I want to always take my template and lay it in an angle across there. Kind of helps break up the shape of the rifle. I want to lay, give it some space. I want to lay it across there and give it a little sandblast and pull it away. I want to lay this template across here and give it a little sandblast all the way to the top and pull it back. So even though we have rails here and some odd shapes, I can still put this template right over the top of those rails and give it a little sandblast. And what do we do? We pull it away. Sandblast, pull it away. Don't forget your barrel. You can't leave that all dark by itself. Sandblast, pull it away. Sandblast, pull it away. Maybe a little bit on the top. Sandblast, pull it away. Well, that does it for the first side. Let's flip it around and do the other side the same way. Keep it in mind, we're gonna keep our pattern kind of oriented the same direction. That's just good craftsmanship. Let's just spin it around. Hopefully we don't use or hit the rifle into the house. Look at that, we've got an olive drab green rifle waiting for us to give it a little sandblast and pull it away. Now our pattern on the other side of the rifle was at an angle like this. So we're gonna duplicate that angle one more time with this template. Keep in mind, move the template up and down to get different pieces of that curvy edge on your rifle. Sandblast, pull it away. Sandblast, pull it away. There we go. Just a little dusting of sand. Kind of like a... Some people have said it sort of looks like a snake skin. I don't know why, because I've never seen a snake that looks like that. Sandblast, pull it away. The thing that makes this pattern look nice when the rifle is completed is the sharp line contrasting with the faded line. So try and get yourself a nice sharp line and a faded line. Move the pattern down, give another sandblast. Move your template around, another sandblast. Don't forget to do tops and bottoms. Sandblast. Pull it out, just a little dusting every now and again. Just a little scooch here and there. There we go. Let's just keep on giving a little pattern up here to break up the outline of that big old dark horizontal line in case we're laying out in the grass somewhere wanting to shoot some bad guys. Now, we don't want to forget to do the bottom and the top of the rifle either. Let's lay it over. The good thing about these matte paints is they dry very, very easily. The paint dries very, very quickly, especially out here, Central California right now, it's about 175 degrees outside. I'm just gonna mask off 
this magazine well with my template since the tape is a bunch of bullshit. Sandblast. Pull it away. Sandblast. Try and copy that pattern right up here. Break up those outlines a little bit. There we go. There we go. Try to make those patterns join each other up. That's just good craftsmanship. There. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. There we go. Boy, if I stumbled across that in the woods, I wouldn't even know it was a rifle. Let's go ahead and flip it over to the top now to make sure we didn't miss anything. There's a couple little spots here I wouldn't mind picking up with a little sandblast. Now we don't want to forget these lovely little rail covers. They don't have to match up with the pattern that we already have on the rifle. So let's just lay the template across them and give them a little blast of the sand color. Try not to get paint on Mrs. OG's flowers. Little blast of sand with a sharp line and a fade away. Little blast of sand with a sharp line and fade it away. There we go, just a little dusting here and there. There we go. I might like to put in a little bit more over here because that first layer was crap. There we go. It's looking good even the way it is right now. But if we like to make it look even better, we can dust in a third color. Let's just dust it in there just a little bit. Just a scooch, just a scooch extra color. Just want to do a couple quick little lines up here. When OG says he wants to do a couple little lines, it doesn't mean the drugs, folks. The drugs is bad for you. There we go. Couple little lines. OG doing lines on camera. Something y'all wanted to see, isn't it? There we go. At this point in painting your rifle, you have a couple of options. You can leave it painted just like this with matte colors, which I prefer to do. That way you sort of get that battle-worn look without having it painted like a LARPer would do. This way, your painted rifle just gets banged and scuffed up and looks a little nicer over time, I think. Get little scratches and little wear marks on the high spots. That's what I like. However, if you don't like that, if you want to preserve the paint job that you've just completed, you can take a clear coat, any old clear spray paint coat, and you can dust your whole rifle in that clear coat and it will go on there like another layer of almost like clear plastic and it will help keep your rifle protected keep those paints from being scratched off and they will last a really long time. If you'd like to be able to take this paint off at any time in the future with a rag and some mineral spirits, don't use the clear coat. Ask me how I know. All right, so all of our paint is dry. We're gonna go ahead and remove this tape and I think we've got a finished rifle. Let's go ahead, come on in. Let's just pull the tape off of here. See if we left any gaps where our Scope covers are going to have paint on them. We're going to get very, very angry at ourselves. There we go. Let's just throw those down on the ground for later, and maybe somebody else will pick them up. Let's pull the tape off of our trigger. Have a black little trigger right there, but that's okay because our dainty little fingers are always going to be hiding that trigger. There we go. And we were very careful not to get any paint up in the magazine well so that our magazines will insert correctly and not be hung up on a whole bunch of paint. So now that our rifle is dry and painted, we can pick it up and use it with reckless abandon. So our rifle painting project is done. I'm very happy with the way it turned out. It reminds me of a seascape or some mountains and little trees and little rabbit sitting there with his little buddy. No, it doesn't remind me of any of those things. It reminds me of a cool rifle that just got a little more badass. Now, your rifle when you are finished is gonna feel a little bit rough, like, like leather. However, as time goes by, those little tiny spray paint dots are gonna wear themselves off of there, probably onto your hands. 
and you're gonna have a smooth and painted rifle that will look beautiful for years to come. I now have a rifle that is all one color instead of black and camouflaged. I'm very happy with the way this rifle came out for my environment. I'm gonna go ahead and add a magazine in here, take it out to the range, sight it in, and make sure our paint didn't mess up our accuracy. I'm gonna go wash this ridiculous stuff off my face before I go to work tomorrow with a stained beard on my face. Folks, I thank you for watching this unusual edition of OG's Danger Show, in where we had no danger whatsoever. I appreciate you watching. I would like it if you would subscribe down below if you have not already done so. Give me a thumbs up. Tap the notification bell. And if you would be so kind, copy a link to this video and send it to 10,000 of your closest friends. You guys be safe out there. I will see you on the next video coming up soon. OG out.